On Sunday, Bernie Sanders said in an interview with MSNBC's Chuck Todd on Meet the Press that pressure from Democrats for Sanders to step down and unite behind Hillary Clinton is an inappropriate way of building solidarity within the party. Rather, it is the presumptive nominee's responsibility to attract voters by addressing their grievances. But at the end of the day, whether it's Secretary Clinton or Bernie Sanders or Donald Trump or anybody else, the way you gain support is through the candidate himself or herself. So my job is to make sure that Trump does not become president, and I will do that. But it is sec if Secretary Clinton is the nominee, it is her job to reach out to millions of people and make the case as to why she is going to defend working families and the middle class, provide health care to all people, take on Wall Street, deal aggressively with climate change. That is the candidate's job to do. With the Democratic National Convention less than two months away, Sanders is figuring out ways to amplify the voice of his supporters in an electoral system he said over the weekend was a, quote, dumb process, which has certainly disadvantaged our campaign. One solution has been his decision to include five prominent progressives to the party's platform writing committee. Among perhaps his most well-known supporters is uh, Cornell West, you know, the renowned uh, scholar and activist. Um, and then also he appointed Bill McKibben. Bill McKibben is, a, is the founder of 350.org, a, a very well-known uh, environmentalist. And then he also appointed several other people, um, Keith Ellison, the, the Minnesota congressman who's a uh, well-known um, progressive congressman. He's uh, spoken out about Palestinian rights and civil rights issues. Um, and then the other two are Deborah Parker, who is a Native American activist who has worked on education and health care support. And then one of the most interesting appointees is James Zogby, who is a uh, pro-Palestinian activist who has been outspoken for years, and he leads uh, an Arab think tank in an organization advocacy group in D.C. So Sanders really kind of got someone that represents all of these different fields. He got someone that does environmental work, someone that does civil rights and economic justice work and anti-war work. He has someone who does Native American issues, someone who's pro-Palestinian. So really, with, with these five seats, Sanders kind of got as much as you could ask for. Ben Norton, a columnist for Salon.com, says that while these five members may very well be shoved to the side during the platform writing process, their inclusion is a bellwether for how certain issues may be discussed by Democrats in the future. You know, we have three pro-Palestinian voices. Uh, Zogby, uh, Cornell West, uh, Keith Ellison, etc. And I think that, uh, you know, it's certainly possible that their voices may eventually be ignored, but the fact that they're already raising these issues is, is very important, and I would argue probably unprecedented. Uh, this week, the New York Times had a piece quoting uh, Cornell West, who accused Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu of war crimes, echoing Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch and other groups which accuse the Israeli military of war crimes in its 2014 war in Gaza. So I, I do think that while it is, again, just being realistic and looking at things perhaps a little cynically, it's possible these people could be ignored. There's no question that they're going to put up a fight. But others are a bit more worried that Democratic elites are using Sanders appointees to simply attract support from his base and are ready to betray any of those grievances if and once Hillary Clinton clinches the nomination. There are problems here. One is that the, is that the secretary and the party alike have shown a great skill at co-opting progressive positions with mere phrases rather than real commitments. And, and that uh, undercuts the, some of the meaning of this process. Bill Curry, a former top aide to Bill Clinton, is somebody who's been involved in writing multiple Democratic Party platforms, both on the state and national levels. He says it's rare for parties and nominees to actually recognize and respect the party platform because so often it goes ignored. The platform committees generally uh, uh, have um, uh, uh, produced documents that are... Um, uh, discussed for a very brief time and read by very few people. It doesn't mean they're unimportant, and it especially doesn't mean that we shouldn't work to make them more important. But uh, getting a few phrases in the Democratic Party platform means less to me. I look back in the 2008 platform, and it contained most of what I'd like to see the country do. Uh, it's just that no one really meant it. 
Curry says that in the end, the kind of changes that Bernie Sanders and his supporters would like to see made within American politics have to come from a strong, sustained popular movement that doesn't allow the party elite to co-op progressive causes. So the question here is, how do you get a party, not only that adopts a platform that reads well, but that takes that platform seriously? And you do that, I think, by building a strong, independent, progressive political movement to hold both parties accountable and, and not simply act as a political action committee for one party or the other. The next big block of primaries is on June 7th. Bernie Sanders says that if he wins California by a large enough margin, the Democratic convention in July will be a contested one. For The Real News, Thomas Hedges, Washington.